Chapter 1. There's something to be said for relatives. It has to be said because it's unprintable. A. Einstein. Perhaps if I hadn't been so preoccupied with my own thoughts when I walked into my quarters that day, I wouldn't have been caught unawares. Still, who expects to get caught in a magical attack just walking into their own room? Okay, okay, so I am the court magician of Hosseltum, and maybe I, sh I have been getting a bit of a reputation lately. I still should be able to walk into my own room without getting jumped. I mean, if a magician isn't safe in his own quarters, can he be safe anywhere? Scratch that question. It's the kind of thing my teacher says to convince me that choosing magic for a career path is not the best way to ensure living out one's normal lifespan. Of course, it doesn't take much convincing. Actions speak louder than words, and the action since I signed on as his apprentice has been loud enough to convince me that a magician's life is not particularly quiet. I mean, when you realize that within days of meeting him, we both got lynched by an angry mob, as in hung by the neck, but I digress. We started out with me simply walking into my room. Yes, yeah, simple. There was a demon waiting for me, a perfect to be exact. This in itself wasn't unusual. Oz, the teacher I mentioned earlier, is a perfect. In fact, he shares my quarters with me. What was unusual was that the demon waiting for me wasn't Oz. Now, I haven't met many Pervex. Heck, the only one I know is Oz, but I know Oz very well, and this Pervex wasn't him. This demon was shorter than my mentor. His scales were a lighter shade of green, and his gold eyes were set closer together. What's more, he wasn't smiling, and Oz always smiles, even when he's mad, especially when he's mad. To the average eye, Oz and this stranger might look alike, but to me they were as different as a devil and an imp. Of course, there was a time when I couldn't tell the difference between a devil and an imp. It says something about the company I've been keeping lately. Who are you? I demanded. You Skeeve? Yeah, me Skeeve. Who you? For an answer, I suddenly felt myself snatched into the air by an invisible hand and spun end over end until I was finally stopped, dangling head down four feet off the floor. Don't get smart with me, punk. I understand you're holding a relative of mine in some kind of bondage. I want him back. Understand? He emphasized his point by lowering me to within a few inches of the floor, then using that service to wrap my head sharply. I may not be the greatest magician ever, but I knew what he was doing. He was using his mind to levitate me about the room. I've done it myself to small objects from time to time. Of course, it occurred to me that I wasn't a small object, and that I was dealing with someone a bit better versed in the magical arts than myself. As such, I deemed it wiser to keep my temper and my manners. You know Oz? Sure do, and I want him back. The latter was accompanied by another head wrap, so much for holding my temper. Then you should know him well enough to know that nobody holds him against his will. My head started for the floor again, but stopped short of its target. From my inverted position, I could get a partial view of the demon tapping himself thoughtfully on the chin. That's true, he murmured. All right. I was turned into an upright position once more. Let's take it from the top. Where's Oz, and what's keeping him in this backwater dimension? I think and talk better with my feet on the ground. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was lowered into a normal standing position. Now that I was self-supporting again, I realized that the interrogation had left me with a splitting headache. He's back in General Bad Axe's quarters, arguing military tactics, I managed. It was so boring, I came back here. He should be along soon. They were almost out of wine when I left. Tactics and wine, hey? My visitor grimaced. That sounds like Oz. What's the rest of it? Why is he staying around a nowhere dimension like Claw? And how did he get mixed up with the great Skeeve? Here and there around... You've heard of me? Here and there around the dimensions, the demon acknowledged. In some circles, they think you're pretty hot stuff. That's why I started wondering if you'd managed to cage Oz somehow. I was braced for a real battle royal when you walked in. Well, actually, I'm not all that good, I admitted. I've only really started making headway in the last couple of years since I've started studying under Oz. I'd still be a total nothing if, I had, if he hadn't lost his powers and taken me on as an, as an apprentice. Bingo, my visitor declared, holding up his hand. I think you just explained everything. Oz lost his powers and took on a new apprentice? No wonder he hasn't been home in a while. And all this talk about the great ski was just a standard Oz-managed type job for a new talent, right? We have taken on a few rough assignments, I said defensively, in which Oz choreographed, then set you up to take the credit, right? What's choreographed, I asked. Obviously, the family similarity was more than scale deep. Well, I hope you're up to operating on your own, Skeeve, because I'm taking your mentor back to Ferd with me. But you don't have to rescue him from me, I protested. He's free to come and go as he wants. I'm not saving him from you. I'm saving him from Oz. Our colleague has an overblown sense of responsibility that isn't always in his own best interest. Do you know how lucrative a practice he's letting fall apart on Perv while he clowns around with you? No, I admitted. 
Well, he's losing money every day he's gone, and that means the family is losing money. <clears throat> right there, I gave up the argument. Early on in my association with Oz, I learned the futility of trying to talk a perfect out of money. The fact that Oz was willing to sacrifice a steady income to work with me was an incredible tribute to our friendship, or his sense of duty. Of course, there's more than one way to win an argument. Well, as I said before, I can't keep him here, I said innocently. If you can convince him he's not needed anymore, no way, punk, the demon sneered. We both know that won't get him to desert it. We both know that won't get him to desert an apprentice. I'm going to lure him back to Perv with a blatant lie, and you're going to keep your mouth shut. But, because if you don't, I'll make sure there's nothing left to keep him in claw, meaning you. Now, before you even think about trying to match magic with me, remember something. You've been studying under Oz for a couple of years now. I graduated after over 300 years of apprenticeship. So far, I'm willing to live and let live. You should be able to earn a living on what you've learned so far. Maybe even pick up a few more tricks as you go along. However, if you cross me now, there won't be enough of you to pick up with a sponge. Do we understand each other? I was suddenly aware why nobody we met in our dimension crawling ever wanted to tangle with a perfect. I was also aware that someone had just walked into the room behind me. Rupert! Uncle Oz? The two pounded each other on the back. I gave them lots of room. Hey, kid, this is my nephew, Rupert. But I see you've already met. Unfortunately, I grumbled. That earned me a black look from Rupert, but Oz missed it completely. So, what brings you to Claw, nephew? A bit off your normal prowl pattern, isn't it? It's Dad. He wants you. Sorry, Oz was suddenly his normal self again. I've got too many irons in the fire here to get drawn into some family squabble. But he's dying. That stopped Oz for a moment. My brother? Nonsense. He's too tough to kill. He could even beat me in an unfair fight. He got into a fight with Mom. A look of concern crossed Ma Oz's face. I could see he was wavering. That's serious, huh? I don't know, though. If he's really dying, I don't see what I can do to help. It shouldn't take long, Rupert urged. He said something about his will. I groaned inwardly. Trust a perfect to know a perfect's weakness. Well, I guess my business here can keep for a few days, Oz declared with false reluctance. Stay out of trouble, kid. I'll be back as soon as I can. Let's get going, Rupert suggested, hiding his triumphant grin. The sooner you get to Perv, the sooner you can get back. But Oz, yeah, kid? I saw Rupert's brow darken. I, I just wanted to say goodbye. Hey, don't make a big thing of this, kid. It's not like I was going forever. Before I could respond, Rupert clapped an arm around Oz's shoulder, and they both faded from view. Gone. Somehow, I couldn't make myself believe it had happened. My mentor had been spirited away permanently. Whatever I had learned from Oz would have to do, because now I was totally on my own. Then I heard a knock at my door.